thanks. And now I would like to see if I can. Ah, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I'm looking for the next slide. Um, what are we going to do today? Today we are going to talk about uh, the career opportunities, um, basically by Peter de Kivit. Peter is the is in the supervisory board of the program, so he has two hats on. He is not only uh, looking over us, but he's also the one who knows the market quite well. Um, so that's why we like to spend some time with Peter and explaining us what are the opportunities. Before doing so, um, for those who are new, have not been in the in the session of last week, I'd just like to share some small thoughts about the program itself. Um, stay with me because next week on the 1st of September, we do an official um, open evening or open session in which we will explain the whole uh, uh, content of the program. But for now, I just keep it shortly with a couple of slides. Um, so what we're doing in the program, we're covering basically the what we call um, treasury management and corporate finance items. Um, so you can see that uh, typical corporate finance is corporate corporate financial management and capital markets and funding. So that's something which is more, let's say, on the corporate finance side. And then let's say more on the tre classical treasury management side, we're covering um, subjects like cash and liquidity management, uh, financial risk management, of course, the deriv derivatives and uh, the way the organization is being set up in the controls. And on top of that, we spend some time in the program on um, yeah, the drivers sometimes of financial products, which are uh, fiscal and, and 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 the financial laws around it. So that's that's in a nutshell what the program is all about. Um, the program, as I already explained, it's uh, two disciplines: treasury management and corporate finance. Uh, we're offering it in six modules and two papers. Um, the mo the program is about uh, one half years. Each Thursday's end of the day as from 3.30 until 8 o'clock with a break in between where we provide a meal, we're offering the program. Uh, per module, there's a kind of, let's say, three core lectures and on average four guest lectures, which makes it very interactive. And we bring, let's say, practice to the academic world. Um, uh, lectures, you will see most of the times from uh, recognizable firms who are also uh, active in the market like Sanders, Orchis, PwC, KPMG and, and, and the rest. And what we do is uh, we offer the program completely in English because nowadays a lot of people live and work in the Netherlands with a non-Dutch speaking. And um, so the whole program is offered in Dutch. The exams are in, in sorry, the whole program is offered in English. The exams and all the material is in English. Um, the schedule for the next coming one and a half years is uh, shown over here. We're starting with the module financial, fiscal law and regulation. And then after we do the international cash management, that's basically to, until uh, January. And then we continue the program in the spring. And then basically you can see also the program for fall next year. So this is what you get in one and a half years, uh, assuming you will start on the 1st of September, which is in one and a half weeks or next week. Um, last but not least, some key facts. Uh, we work closely together with the uh, Dutch Association of Corporate Treasurers. That's a very nice corporation already for 25 years. Um, and saying that the program is already running for 25 years at the um, FU University. Um, and we can do this only because we're heavily supported by our uh, partners. And one of them, uh, which is organizing this session, is Treasury Excel, and we are very happy that 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 is possible. So together with these partners, we're also doing these kind of sessions. And uh, what's very important for you as a person who is maybe joining the program, you will be able to um, have a title, and the title is registered treasurer. And people known in the market know what the value of the title of, of this of this title. And that is that brings me to introducing Peter. Because Peter, Peter is able to um, to share with you the value of that title and what it can bring right. to you in your career. Um, can I ask the organization to mute somebody who is um, who, who I can hear now, so um, that only the speakers can be heard and not, let's say, uh, surrounding sounds. 
Um, I will stop sharing and I will give the floor to Peter. Great, thank you, uh, Robert. And I will share my screen with my big head on it. So I will quickly move to the next slide. Um, and thank you for the introduction and thank you for having me. Um, um, for me, uh, um, the goal of this session is to, uh, to give you some food for thought uh, on your own career management. Uh, what we noticed is that um, uh, career planning and everything related to that is very often an end of vacation, be it summer vacation or uh, Christmas time. That's the moment that when we hear as recruiters a lot about people thinking about their career. Um, and I think, uh, of course, uh, with the uh, Vrije Universiteit hosting this session with special attention to, uh, to education for uh, the most uh, emphasis on that. Um, starting with a, with, a, with a disclaimer, twofold. Uh, first, uh, there's no absolute truth in career management and in education, education planning. Um, it's very much about uh, where your goals are, what your, um, uh, where your personal preferences are first. And second, you should know about my background. Uh, of course, I'm a recruiter. Uh, and as, as Robert mentioned, I'm part of the so-called curatorium uh, of the uh, of the of the Vrije Universiteit. Um, and um, um, I think my input is objective, but I expect this audience also to be very critical um, and uh, ask questions or bring input. And that's my set of webinar house rules. Um, I'm open for, for, uh, for input, for questions, for remarks. Um, I, uh, I even kind of appreciate disagreement. Um, so, um, Bring, uh, uh, I think this, the size of the audience is so that we can have some, some dialogue here, both from an um, em employee perspective, career management perspective, but perhaps also from an employer perspective. So um, looking forward to an interactive um, session there. Um, so um, where I start off uh, from content perspective is kind of a top-down perspective and um, um, uh, take it from strategic career management, the big picture. Because I think uh, choosing uh, uh, for a specific treasury uh, education is not a question you ask by itself. It's part of a, of a bigger strategy part. So um, um, where am I now? Why do I think about career management? Why is that important for me? Um, um, can you, by the way, see my screen? No, no we, we don't. Can't. We don't see your presentation. No. Ah, I see my own screen. Got the green uh, button. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was. I was sharing. Let me start again, or this one, and it should give me. Okay, let me see. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry for this. Bear with me. Do you see me now? Do you see the now? Yeah, uh, yeah we do see it. Yeah. Great. Now my whole setup is mixed up so i have to uh toy with that if there I, I don't see the dialogue box anymore so if you can uh, if you can help me with that uh, perhaps later on i would appreciate that so let me let me continue with the strategic career management uh, uh, the bigger picture so um it's it, a question about uh, education it's not by itself uh, it is about where do you stand why do you think about that what drives uh, you uh, prof professional first, of, co of course. Where do I want to go? And in my perception, uh, your 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 professional dream and your and your path uh, should be a marathon. Um, the Germans say "Der Weg ist das Ziel," so I don't think there's a dot on the horizon, and and that uh, some of you can perhaps uh, confirm this 
uh, that if you if you achieve a certain role that everything is great forever no it's it's a path and uh and, and you should enjoy what you're doing um, um all the time in my humble opinion so also in education if you pick up an education it can be a a, a means to an end uh but if if an investment in education is a big one, for instance, like with the uh, fixed treasury education, if you don't enjoy doing the education, you will uh, have a hard time, and it will be relatively hard to successfully uh, complete uh, um, uh, the whole program. Um, so um, yeah, going to the next one. So. If, if you talk about your planning in, in education, before you dive into several of several programs, it is about um, um, what, what do you want to develop in yourself? Because education uh, comes in very various forms and shapes. And many of us did a, a university education, uh, learned from books, perhaps even did some research. Um, but where, where do you want to invest? Uh, what are your career goals and what in education will help you to achieve these goals? Um, um, uh, is it opening a book or is it training uh, perhaps a mindset? And there's a book called uh, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, which is kind of an elaboration on the previous point. What you very often see is that, uh, that the uh, uh, education you completed, university education, will get you your, your graduate level job, uh, which is of course great, uh, um, but um, your, your, your um, education will not get you perhaps your management job, your people management job, your project job, because what you, what you learned at the university is quite theoretical. And if you want to learn about people management or about form shaping and strategy, uh, that might be necessary to get the step to the manager role or to the director role. So I think um, bear in mind what, uh, what your goals are uh, and project that on your education uh, uh, purposes. And, and lastly, uh, which is another uh, elaboration on the previous, um, expertise is not always the decisive factor. And that's perhaps not what um, the people of the Vrije Universiteit want to hear, although I think in the, in the Register Treasure uh, uh, Education there is a lot that extends to, to, uh, to the academic. Uh, but it's also about um, um, other perhaps aspects uh, to, to get you a promotion. So what I see is that a lot of people really have to claim their promotion. And it is a combination of multiple factors. So you can complete a program, but in the meantime, to complete a nice project, uh, create a real change in your organization, uh, and um, um, uh, solely an extra degree in whatever uh, um, variation is not the uh, the miracle path to your uh, to your next to your next job. Um, so. Um, um, if you want to pursue this treasury education, um, let me start by saying there's, a, there's currently there's a, there's a real choice to be made. Uh, the differences between the various programs are very, very prominent in my, uh, my perception. La, uh, um, um, there's an increasing interest in education in general, in treasury education. So you see developments from various entities from uh, universities, universities of applied sciences, from the educational side, the professional educators who know what it is to bring a person from A to B, from, from skills, from mindset, whatever. But there's also a, 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 a lot of interest from um, uh, professional bodies like the DACT, like the ACT, uh, um, um, so they also want perhaps a, uh, a share of the pie there. Um, and also you see that, um, that all kinds of other organizations, be it Treasury Excel, be it uh, consultants, uh, like uh, uh, the big four or, 
uh, Zond or, or Orchard Finance, educate people in various ways. So there's a real choice. It's increasing, but it's also a small market. It's a, it's a niche market. So um, that, that makes it, I think, on one hand for you as a potential student harder um, to, uh, to, to choose. On the other hand, I think there is a real choice to be made. And that, that, that brings then me to the point of what do you want to achieve? To put it a bit practical, what are the KPIs you can define uh, to, uh, to decide um, what uh, your education should look like? Um, um, so what are the KPIs? And I think um, um, obvious ones are for a lot of people focused on the career path. So get me an extra title so I get a better job, I get a better salary and, 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 and more interesting stuff there. Uh, but I also think uh, people want a real impact. Uh, and what I also see is that from a, um, uh, uh, an, an employee, uh, employer perspective, it's also a way to, to commit uh, employees to the, uh, to the, to the company. company. Um, furthermore, what I see in education is that uh, a lot of students learn from their peers. So the whole question about distance learning, learning, learning through a webinar, learning in person, but or perhaps just open a book, um, is something that can be relatively easy, um, um, let's say underestimated, because all people I know who did a, a training um, in person, um, all tell me they learned so much from not only the, the industry experts, but also from the other people they are studying with. So what are your KPIs? What do you want to achieve? Um, easily just as important, what are, what are your constraints? Uh, um, how much time do you have? Because a postgraduate program is, is taking a lot of time of you. And I think it's, it's all value for money, but how is your family situation? Um, what are your hobbies? Uh, how, can, you, can you balance it? And, and not only the, the, the long time perspective is really important because it brings value for the rest of your career if you did completed a good program, but also on, on short term, you, you, will, you, you must be able to, uh, to, to be able to handle it. What I also nowadays see a lot more is the money question. So um, the standard used to be that uh, employers paid treasury education. Um, um, and in the whole employability discussion, I see an increasing number of people bearing the cost themselves, either partly or completely. That was unthinkable 10 years ago. So um, uh, I think that's, that's an interesting uh, uh, observation um, that uh, a lot of the, uh, um, um, let me just try to get me chat box back. Um, um, th th that is important also the, 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 the money. Um, I think also motivation, you have to be, you have, you have to be able to open the books to sit every evening. And for some programs, more than for others, your intellectual capabilities. If you, if you want to pursue an academic program uh, with a lot of, for instance, academic aspects in there, uh, a lot of quantitative analytical aspects, be honest to yourself. You will be helped in there, but um, uh, you have to be able to do the, do the math. And if you know it's not you, it's not only relevant for your educational choices, it's also relevant for your career. If you want to do uh, a lot of risk and front office work uh, um, and you are really bad at math, I think that's not the smartest thing to do. Perhaps it's not the smartest career choice to work in treasury for that matter. Um, and, yeah, um, and, and then um, uh, uh, furthermore in education, I think there's no, no, um, no standard in treasury education. 
which makes it sometimes a bit awkward. So, so we are, this session is hosted by the Register Treasurer Education, the RT title, the Vrije Universiteit, which is a Dutch program, but now already uh, educated in English for a number of years. It is kind of the, the obvious standard in the Netherlands, and now it's becoming more in, in surrounding countries. Uh, but it's not like the, it's a CPA, not yet there. So if, if uh, education is also important in your career planning and you are thinking about the reputation of the program, regretfully, there's no standard. So think about where you want to go in your career uh, and, and also perhaps that is something you want to take into consideration there. So before you choose, it's just like choosing a treasury management system. Don't go into the market and see what's out there and then start deciding. First, think about what's the purpose of this whole education thing for me? What do I want to achieve? What's the, uh, the most important for me? And then start screening the programs. That would be my personal advice. So, then I have two slides where I go in the side, say, a, 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 a helicopter view over the most obvious programs. And the first slide are, in my humble opinion, the, let's say, the, the bigger, more prominent programs there are out there. Uh, and again, uh, there's a real choice because they are really, really different in, in multiple aspects. But I think from, let's say, a career screening perspective, um, they, they, are, uh, uh, they, are, they are the most, the most prominent. Coming from, let's say, a Western European uh, perspective. Uh, in other geographies, it will be a bit different. But I think the, 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 the programs over here are the most prominent. Perhaps when I have this do this presentation in two or three or four years, the French and the Spanish will be more prominent, but for now, this is the most, uh, this is what I want to, uh, to highlight. And of course, start off, starting off with the Vrije Universiteit, the Postgraduate Treasury Management and Corporate Finance. Um, in my, my perception uh, uh, and also objectively measured, it's the most comprehensive program. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's the longest, it's the most expensive, it's, time consuming, uh, um, it's hosted by a university uh, that uh, uh, follows all the academic standards of how you, how you teach uh, students in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, a postgraduate program. Uh, the sessions are by default live, of course, uh, during Corona, the whole webinar video-based uh, uh, applications are um, applied but the standard is is live and, li and live is is communicating with your peers um, and that's also really strongly connected to the academic approach so it's 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 opening the books in my perception but perhaps robert and herbert can can speak to this later on in the session it's opening the books but it's then checking if you if you really understand what's happening there, uh, what this this theory uh, means in daily life of the treasurer, and then taking the next step uh, and uh, increasing treasury knowledge with your own wisdom, analytical skills, uh, and bring it to the next level. So it's 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 like a three story building. Uh, uh, the peer appreciation is, is, is most noted there because it's all live. It's not Dutch anymore. And it's not so much one size fits all because your, your, uh, your professional background, you can bring into the program. And if you write papers, you can really dig in with academic experts uh, and bring it, uh, uh, apply your personal uh, professional situation to the academic uh, surroundings. So that's, that's about uh, the Vrije Universiteit. And, and there also what I noticed is that an increasing number of people pay for the program themselves. But as mentioned also, it's, it's the most expensive one of all programs. 
then most of you here present will uh, know the, the program of the ACT. As you all know, the ACT is the, the, uh, the uh, Association of Corporate Treasury based in the, in the UK. So you have the Dutch Association of Treasury or Corporate Treasury, which is called the DACT, and the British decided ACT is the global one, but they are the British one. Um, they have various modules. It's it's uh, it's uh, um, various uh, uh, um, components. Uh, it's distance learning. Uh, it's it's quite well known in the international market. Uh, um, and what I noticed there is that that it's recognizable for a lot of employers, and that's that's a plus that cannot be denied. So uh, a British or German or American uh, and also a Dutch or a Belgian uh, employer will um, recognize uh, the ACT uh, most, most easily. Um, what they do a bit more is the one size fits all. So you know somewhere that, that the British treasury is the, the absolute truth. Um, yeah. Um, and, and also that the, the, uh, um, the background of them as a professional body is different from a, let's say, um, an educational perspective. Uh, and and, and, and uh, a university professor will, will design his educational programs different than a, um, um, a sales-driven ACT organization that manages various business models. Um, uh, and is a, is a, a, a for-profit organization. Then a relatively new kid on the block is the CTP, Certified Treasury Professional, which is an American uh, qualification. Uh, just like the previous one, you can, you can add a title to your name, so it's CTP behind your name, but it's, it's the smallest of the three programs I mentioned, uh, I mentioned right now. It's mostly appreciated, of course, by, by, by US employers because they know the title. Not so much in Europe yet, but it could be more increasingly. So they, they are kind of growing. It's a bit of a, 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 a um, open a book, study hard, uh, and, and do the test kind of, 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 of education. Uh, from money and time perspective, it's, it's, a, it's a lower threshold. Um, but um, what I also notice is that the American way of doing treasury uh, is very different from what I see from Europe and Asia. Uh, other solutions, other problems, uh, um, and of course the, 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 the peer group uh, aspects are not so prominent. So it's, 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 it's time and money investments, it's academic level, it's what you, what you take from the program. The last I, want, I do want to mention, uh, I must admit, I don't know the finer details of that, but the German ACT, Verband Deutsche Treasure, do have an, uh, a cooperation with the Frankfurt School of, uh, of Finance and Management. They do have kind of a postgraduate in various models. Uh, it's, quite, it's, it's, it's only for German speakers. So next time we do this session, I will know more about it. I think it's it's uh, it's it's closer to the ACT as far as I can oversee as as let's say the the, the amount of work, uh, um, and it's uh, it's it's uh, I think it 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 belongs on this first slide from from most prominent ones. Um, as mentioned, I expect I expect it to be somewhere between ACT and CTP, and very much German. So this is the this is the the first uh, group of of education that I want to mention, and then I go to the second one. The first first ones are, from my perspective, are are, are solid, uh, um, substantial programs. The second I would quali want to qualify a bit more in in courses. So uh, oh, let me go there. So, so I mentioned three groups there, but it's it's a bit of sometimes a bit of a cluster. The first is a, is a Dutch education I want to mention. It's a Nive. They are very long in the market. They've got their education uh, called um, uh, qualified cash manager and qualified treasurer. Uh, they also they also 
have titles you can put behind your, your, your name. Uh, at the same time, I mentioned, I noticed that it's a bit entry level, that it's, it's a lot of bankers who take this course. And also using the title can be tricky. On one hand, a, a HR manager or a CFO who doesn't know about education at all in treasury will say, oh, that's great. It's a title, it's a program, it's good. On the other hand, people in the market who do know, uh, do know that's an entry level uh, course. So if you, if you make it too big, big on your CV, and you claim that it's, 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 it's a really senior education, it might disqualify you because uh, it's, it's, it's in my perception a bit of a, of a course uh, there. So, um, and I, th I think given the cost, there might be better options, but uh, as mentioned, this is not fully uh, objective what I'm saying here. Um, for, as a CV reader, I only see the, 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 <coughs> the, the qualification mostly with, uh, with bankers. Um, I see an increasing number of, of master class fundamental kind of programs. Also here, perhaps Robert later on can mention if there's interest in, the, in this uh, about the, uh, the fundamentals programs. I, I now highlight two. First, you've got your, your fundamentals uh, um, um, organized by the Vrije Universiteit uh, uh, and Robert in particular, uh, which is um, webinar based, a number of sessions, uh, quite intense. I get back from, from participants that it's, it's, it's not an easy one. They make, they really want to, they really make it work. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's sniffing a bit uh, what the registered treasure program might bring. Um, uh, and it's, it's already at an, as far as I can oversee academic level. Uh, um, so it could be a, a stepping stone. It could also be a program for people working in control and every now and then have to deal with treasure and know the fundamentals and leave it at that. Uh, another program uh, organized, I think for the second or third time shortly is by the Hogeschool Utrecht, which is the University of Applied Sciences in Utrecht. They have uh, a, a master class, which is four evenings getting to get Together in a small group, uh, getting classes from professionals from the field, uh, um, kind of a smaller course where where they can tweak the program to your to your liking, um, um, and it's it's a bit connected to the people who do the minor treasury management at the uh, for the for the let's say the day students, the young students who at uh, who are aiming at their bachelor title in, for instance, business, business economics. Uh, the same expertise is brought in a, in a four evening program, uh, which is also kind of an entry level one. And then the last uh, um, uh, group I want to mention is that there is a continuous flow of workshop programs, be it a, uh, a, a workshop uh, and if during an, 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 an large event, like a one hour class, uh, webinar based, personal, um, it's very often also connected to kind of a sponsoring expert. So for instance, a legal expert of a, of a law firm telling about, I don't know, uh, 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 contractual aspects uh, in an hour or two. So I think they, they, those programs have value. They're very, very often very practical oriented. They are very cheap or even for free. I know, for instance, recently the, uh, the boot camp was organized. Uh, I think they also, they all have, have value. You will learn, you will meet people. Um, and it could be kind of a little sound bites that, that help you, help you in, uh, in learning. From a career perspective and and convincing uh, your new employer or your boss that you could should get that, that nice job i think added value is limited uh, if you do it on a structural basis you can say okay i did so many but but going to a course for two or three hours is not 
what may, will make a real real difference. Uh, but they, they, can, they can be can be valuable, um, and they can be, for instance, very focused on on recent developments. So what 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 I what I want to mention here is that that in all these different programs, different aspects are important. The obvious time, money, academic level, uh, being present, uh, um, uh, perhaps also location. It's 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 all very different. So in my perception, if you think. The becoming a registered treasurer at the Vrije Universiteit is an option for you. You really cannot compare it with the CTP. Um, it's it's apples and oranges. Uh, so so my advice to you is um, if you if you are considering education, go back to your career objective. Go back to your current situation. Go where do you want to move in your career? What what brings you most? And uh, and then uh, project that on the KPI or, or define the KPIs that most are most important for you, and then go to the various programs that that will that will help you decide. Uh, um, what I do notice is also that the, the the order in which I presented the the, the, the various programs are an. an uh, uh, project the impact they have on the uh, appeal of your CV. So an RT, Register Treasure Education, has a bigger appeal. So it's, 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 it has more value than uh, a smaller course. Uh, and, and over time, uh, the program is now there for over 20, 25 years. Now there's a real impact and we're getting to the standards, but we are not there yet. Um, and, and again, my la two last remarks. My first remark is don't forget the rest of your life. I, I mentioned it before. Do enjoy the program, otherwise you won't be able to complete it or complete it at the proper, uh, let's say, level. And then I go to my, back to my, my very first remark. Uh, there is no truth in, in career management and in, um, in choosing your education. So I would like to hear from you, what are your questions? And um, where do you disagree or would you like to add um, to uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what I already mentioned? In brief, what are your questions? So I will stop sharing and, and Hand over to Robert to show a nice slide and uh, open perhaps the discussion. Then I first have to unmute myself. Yes, thank you, Peter, for this uh, valuable contribution and that you put the program at the view at the first spot. Um, um, I, I already have a question and I, uh, let, 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 let's start with that and then um, maybe this is already one. Um, if, um, do you come, in, in you as a professional um, um, headhunter as well, um, do, let's say, employees ask for certain kind of qualifications? Do they precisely tell you, hey, Peter, I'm looking, I'm looking for a treasurer or looking for a cash manager or looking for a front office manager or a dealer, whatever. And I want this person to have this and this and this um, education level. Is that something they ask for? Or is this something like, okay, it's nice that you can put it on your CV. It will add to the, because you're a CV reader, it will add, let's say, to the qualifications to get uh, in the spotlight of this particular employer. Uh, it's changing over time. So what I see now is, well, uh, we always got the question. So I remember a search about uh, 12 years ago where a client said, we want uh, a new treasurer with about three years experience and he will make about uh, 50,000 or 55,000 euros and he should work in the, uh, uh, in the very east of the Netherlands. And he should have completed the, the, the program, the Registered Treasure program. Well, that was a sign 
of an HR manager who Googled, found the RT education and just included it in, in the job description. That of course was a mission impossible and based upon no knowledge at all. Now I do see an increasing uh, number of, of, of our clients, employee, uh, uh, employers who ask for treasury qualifications, almost never as a, a firm demand, as a must have, almost always as a nice to have. Um, and, and based upon two aspects, the first, uh, uh, they want to have the, the, uh, the expertise, of course, that's the obvious. They want to have candidates who know the job. But also a second one is um, um, that, of course, there are the, the, an increasing number of people with the qualification out there who landed senior management positions. So the, what we see over time is that registered treasurers are landing group treasurer positions, treasury operation manager, senior management roles, and they complete the program. So they say, we, we, would, we would appreciate somebody who completed the program and or uh, we are open for candidates who will uh, join the program. So also uh, that connects to the, both the current situation in the labor market, uh, uh, where where you can we can appeal, we bring in extra candidates with offering the education. Um, but it's fairly distinctive that the type of clients the, there are employers who just don't know and say any qualification we like because it's a sign of interest and expertise. And the ones who really know, who are very often the, high, the actual hiring managers who say, okay, we want this or that uh, specific education. So yes, there's an increasing demand, uh, but it's, it's, not, we, it's not yet at a point where it's a must have. And, and to add one more question, then I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, you as a, let, let me call you a headhunter or recruiter, you see a lot of people and these people want to have another job. They come to you and say like, hey, Peter, can you help me? Um, do yourself sometimes give the advice to people like, hey, go to the ACT or go to the university or go to the um, Hogeschool of Utrecht and first get some education and then come back to me if you want this. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole, the, the, we do, do um, let's say career counseling uh, as part of our job, but it's it's only briefly because I think it's a, it's a separate uh, service. So we, we include it in, in one hour max sessions and when it gets longer, others should take over. But in these sessions, typically education is a topic. And also there I, I mentioned what I mentioned before in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in my presentation is really look at why it is you want to pursue an education. So sometimes uh, we get candidates who uh, have a very strong cash management track record. Hmm. That's an obvious way to enter corporate treasury. People start as a treasury analyst, cash manager. Uh, they're busy with forecasting, uh, pooling, sweeping, payments, and all related. And uh, um, um, they want to um, uh, get a more prominent position in risk or even better, the group treasurer position and also in funding. If, you're, if you are not allowed to, uh, to have a spot at the table when it comes to funding and you want to convince either your current or your new employer that, uh, that you should get a spot at the table and should be involved in funding aspects, then you, then, you, then you have to find reasons that they should include you and that, that could be confirmed expertise. And especially for those where you go from, let's say, risk to, to corporate finance, I would, I would strongly advise people not to do the smaller courses because a course in corporate finance simply doesn't work. Mm. You really have to, have to invest. And that's, that's the moment, that's an example of a, of a moment that I say, okay, uh, go in that direction or the other uh, or whatever but but there are also candidates who come to us and say i work my whole life in accounting or control and i i i, I just sniffed treasury and now i want to push i want to step into treasury uh, full-time what can i do 
And typically I would advise them to, to use a stepping stone. So go to a fundamentals program or anything else, because also I know that your program, the Vrije Universiteit program, will not be the best surrounding for somebody who is um, not doesn't have enough expertise to, to even start. Um, yeah. So so um, yeah, that that's that's what 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 we do over there. I think there's a question for you, Peter, in the chat. Yeah. I see. I see. I, 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 Interesting one. Yeah. Did not notice, mention the treasure test. Uh, Sven mentioned, I think everybody can see that the treasure test is sometimes part of the hiring process. Is it linked to the program? In other words, um, it, it is, uh, it's, it's not linked to the program. It's, a, it's separate. It, you can consider it completely separate. Uh, at the same time, uh, the founding fathers of the treasurer test, uh, there was also the Freie Universiteit uh, uh, involved, especially um, uh, in, in the, of course, the questionnaire. And um, um, what you can, what you, you can consider the treasurer test as kind of a measuring stick, like a thermometer, you, 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 you measure your current status. So it's not an education, um, it's more of a indicator. So, of course, if you do well on the treasurer test, it's a strong indicator that you've got the level, uh, that you already have the expertise necessary to even start the program. Uh, but it's an indicator. So, so let's say it's just like my job, I'm a recruiter. And what I want to do is, is predict if somebody is successful in a position, and that, that's what you do with an interview, with a CV screening, with uh, reference checks, et cetera, et cetera. And one of these um, uh, measuring sticks is the treasure test. And if somebody does really, really well, then it's an indicator that, that you might have, let's say, uh, uh, you can hit the ground running there. Uh, at the same time, I also know uh, that the program uh, at the Vrije Universiteit, a strong indicator is also how well you did at university. So in general, one could say if you complete, completed a, an, an, a university uh, program, you, you have a degree, especially when there's an, a quantitative component in there. That's perhaps just as strong an indicator that you can can complete the, 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 the program. So I um, I think those would be two, two really strong indicators. So does that answer your question, uh, Sven? Um, yes. Okay. It did. It did. Um, I, I can imagine that also uh, the, the um, uh, uh, salary aspects for people are really open to make it a transfer uh, and, and what the value is uh, there therein. So what's the, what's the next uh, salary step I can make? In general, there used to be times that uh, uh, a postgraduate would like an MBA or a CPA would be a, a jump uh, uh, of easily 10, 15, 20,000 euros. That was up to, let's say, 2017. Then, of course, the labor market and everything changed a lot. People still completed programs, but the, the jumps ahead were not that prominent. Nowadays, also, the education will help, but uh, it's an equation with, 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 with many variables. And the biggest jumps in salary now are also connected to the general tightness of the market. Yeah, but, but over a longer period of time, I can say that uh, if we compare people who graduated the program and compare them with the people who did not graduate, uh, there's, there's a big delta in salary. That could be because of the program. That's what Herbert and Robert will think and say. I think also the, the really ambitious people, the people who want to move up and ahead uh, will join the program. So automatically those are also the people who, uh, who will get the salary raises. Uh, let me go. Sondi is having a very interesting question, Peter. And um, 
as you know, I, um, I lived and worked in South Africa. And somebody is asking, do you have an office in South Africa? And if you have not, can I apply for the job as recruiter in your office in South Africa? No, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> um, this is something uh, maybe you can answer, uh, Peter. I'm, 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 I, I, uh, I'm reading. However, we do not have knowledge of recruiters in South Africa. Huh. Um, we, we do not have officers, of course, in the LR, of course, <laughs> in general. Uh, uh, we, we there are this is this is a bit off topic so my brief answer otherwise is only reach out to me uh, a one on one there the, the recruitment market is covered by generalists uh, with the obvious names and there are three specific agencies covering more or less the world where treasure search is very much focused on continental Europe uh, there's an agency uh, in, in, in London, uh, Mike Richards, uh, office, uh, who is much focused on the UK and every now and then in, in, in Europe. And then there's an, an, a company uh, in uh, Australia and uh, the Far East, and they cover the US and, and that region. Um, and I, I can, I can let's, let's discuss that, that one on one. In general, I, I can say that. Um, the uh, the knowledge of HR managers and corporate recruiters about treasury is, is, is relatively low. Um, so I do see an increase there. Let's go back to the top. Peter, yeah. but that, this brings me to another subject because in the Netherlands, we have this particular program we're offering at the VU, which is quite unique because it's not offered around the world. In the Netherlands also, because somebody is bringing me to that attention, we also do have a specialized treasury search firm like what you're offering as uh, Peter de Kievit. Mm -hmm. Is the Netherlands market different than the rest of the world because we're offering this postgraduate program? We have special search people for treasury functions. What you don't see at the rest of the world, is that something unique in the Netherlands? Is it, does it belong to the Dutch kind of way of doing business? Maybe you can explore a little bit on that. Um, yes, uh, uh, it's also a bit off topic, but I think the, 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 the Netherlands has an, uh, an above average high number of headquarters, treasury headquarters and similar. That's, that's for fiscal reasons. So you saw in the past that Ireland, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and Switzerland uh, house a lot of treasury entities. So there's also a, a bigger uh, uh, Treasury population and also a more international treasury population, and that results in, in an agency like mine, and and also perhaps an education like the RT program. So it's it's a bit about numbers. Uh, and, and next week, for instance, I'm in Scandinavia, and there you see there's no fiscal rulings. There are relatively low number of headquarters, so the treasury population is lower. So it doesn't. It, it's just simple, not good economy to have uh, specialized uh, uh, education and, and agencies. Uh, it, it remains very niche, uh, but what strikes me in the Netherlands is how international it is. So, so in our agencies, over 70% of the candidates we find a job for and the persons we work with are non-Dutch. So I think it's, it's, it's a brewing pot of various aspects. It's the fiscal, it's the Netherlands being relatively international and very much a, a, a uh, let's say a roundabout in all money flows and stepping stones for many to continental Europe. Uh, Robert, Robert, may I um, uh, yes, have Peter. a few a comment? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, thanks, Peter, for, for your very nice presentation. What, what I took away very much is your first question, what do you want to achieve? Uh, so if you have your own career, your personal development, your career development, that should be your starting point. And then, of course, you can go to all the kind of courses trying to increase your, let's say, your uh, expertise. But as you said, expertise is not a decisive factor. That's also one of your quotes in your uh, presentation. But I think I, I very strongly believe it's conditional. If you want to grow in your personal development treasury, you need to have some expertise. That's also what the... Uh, Treasury program at the Vrije University is offering. Uh, last uh, session, before we had on the teaching philosophy, so what do we really have to offer? That may be something I want to give you all uh, to, uh, some kind of takeaway. 
of course, you have operational knowledge to keep on going in your treasury, uh, let's say, a profession. But what we do also, and that's what uh, you mentioned quite often, academic, but what do we mean with academic is that we look somewhat more further than you, your, what we call operational knowledge and yeah, get things done. Why do we do it this way? And also that you have some feeling about, okay, the treasury profession, where it is moving ahead. So you can form opinions yourself, be creative, uh, create yourself new insights, becoming a master of your profession. That's exactly what we try to offer. Not just expertise, like a lot of our competitors do. So that's maybe the way you have to look at, at this program is, is uh, you need to also to go in depth. If you really want to grow in, as, as a, uh, let's say, in your career, uh, you will also have to get more in depth, not only expertise, but also uh, you need some skills in becoming more creative, get more insight, know some little background, and it will give you a lot more comfort. It will give open also doors for your peers. It also, uh, I think, make yourself enjoy, let's say, your treasury profession, and I think that's very much in a nutshell. Maybe you can look uh, back right in the first session is what we try to, uh, to, uh, to look for with our teaching uh, philosophy. It's really that added value. So going, coming back to your, uh, let's say, contribution, it's really what do you want to be, achieve? Yes, expertise is a lot. It's very, very, very important. That's, that's bottom line. You need to have expertise about it. But next step to make you more comfortable and make also more enjoyable, let's say your trade profession, you need to go more background knowledge and try to master your profession. And that's what we call with academic. It's not academic. What we mean is academic professional. And academic is not that it is somewhere in ivory tower. I want to really stress everything what we do in the program is not at a distance. It's everything is relevant for your daily life uh, profession. Okay, that's some contribution. Thanks a lot. Uh, Peter. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Herbert. Uh, yeah. For the time, uh, we have to start finishing off. Yeah. Uh, as a moderator, I have to be able to do that. Uh, Peter, you see the question from Sven about yeah. Treasury Bank Treasury Risk Management and the one on the AC dealing certificates. Uh, yeah. Are you able to answer that question? Because I would yeah. like to take that as a last question. Yeah. Quickly, and then will be our, our last uh, question. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And I think the, uh, the, the, there is value in the banking-oriented uh, treasury trading. Uh, two, two observations there. Very often the, the, the banks go deeper in, uh, in products. So it's very much product and technical oriented. So it has value. But then I come also to the second set or the second element is the, the, it's, it might be more technical, but also more product oriented. And, and the whole mindset of a corporate treasurer is very different from a bank perspective. So a banker wants to sell products and a corporate treasurer wants to do good tre corporate treasury, which is, 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 is uh, um, very, very, very important. So there is value um, there, but it's, it's not... Uh, you can't you can't exchange them. It's not into it's not it's not one for the other, so to say. So um, and otherwise, then we can we can we can call, and that that would also uh, perhaps help help you a bit more there. And I think Robert will wrap it up and tell everybody to come to the uh, the personal um, uh, session and uh, and join the program, don't you, Robert? Uh, yes, uh, that's, uh, oh yeah, I have to share then my screen with my last slide, so uh, let's do it, let's do this officially, then uh, hopefully then uh, share yet, and I have one more slide, let me see, let me see, hopefully everybody can see this one, yeah, so um, yeah, now, what, uh, to, to wrap it up, um, thanks, Peter, for your contribution. Um, this is what we did in a series of two sessions. So uh, Herbert briefly gave, let's say, a an, an, an small synopsis of last week, this week about career and, and the way, let's say, professional the market looks at it, like Peter de Kivit. Um, what else do we do? We start the program next week and we still have an open evening or a what we call in Dutch a Voorlichtingsavond on the 1st of September. So if you want to see what we're offering in the total program, please come to that. 
it still will allow you to join the program this year already. So um, join us on that one. And uh, for now, I would like to say thanks for everybody and uh, wish you a very good day. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, thanks all for being here and uh, for your contribution.